The people, most of the people here, they really don't care. You tell them it's a billion dollars in a taxi school and it's so what, or money well spent. You really got to wonder what's going on with the American public. I'm the proud board member representing Edward R. Royball Learning Center. Uh, LA Unified said that they would have a policy to disclose the history of the site um, and the dangers of the site. So I'm here to find out what policy is that. To bury the disaster of the past, the Los Angeles Unified School District put a new coat of paint and renamed the world's most expensive high school, the Belmont Learning Center. They first named it Vista Hermosa, and now they're calling it the Edward R. Roybal High School. Full disclosure, send our cameras to the special dedication day where everyone was invited to come and celebrate the new school. LAUSD is in the middle of the largest public school construction program in the nation's history. You know, out of a caterpillar blooms a butterfly. Today, we are looking at the butterfly that bloomed from the caterpillar because what happened in the history of this school, as difficult as it was to get this school built, we now finally have our butterfly. LAUSD Board President Monica Garcia boasted about her district facilities and construction staff and how they've been top construction people in the nation. And our facilities team has been the engine, the leadership to make us the best of the best. When you're a part of LAUSD facilities division, you know you're leading the nation in best practices, best products. We have Guy Mahula, head of New School Construction, stating... Schools cost, elementary schools 180 a foot, middle schools 190, high schools 200. Well, the spreadsheet shows 218 to 654 for an average of about 350. Well, Guy, what happened? Let's go back to 2000. We hadn't built anything yet. We hadn't uh, got a new school in place. We had a pretty ugly caterpillar here. Today, <clears throat> this school opening up is number 71 from that time. 71 schools. At least Superintendent Brewer acknowledged the taxpayers for approving all the bonds. And I would like to thank, I would like to thank the community, the taxpaying community, for helping us to fund a school like Edward R. Royball Learning Center. The bonded indebtedness from person has gone from $38 to $1,500 with these bonds. And you're not getting your money's worth. I'm not against building schools, but not blowing the money away and giving it away for free. Mr. Bazzetti pointed out the wasteful and exorbitant way LAUSD builds schools to the significant benefit of the developers and contractors. In 2003, this school was $220 a square foot. Today, it's over 1000 You can't show me that any employee has made 500% more in wages or the commodities have gone up 500 percent. That means only one thing. The money went into the owner's pockets for free. That's what's going on in this entire school district. Board President Monica Garcia acknowledged the vast sums of money leveraged from LA taxpayers and matched by state funds from all Californians. The voters of Los Angeles over four bonds have invested Twenty billion dollars, and they've done so. Um, they've done so over the top each time, and they have said, "Spend those dollars dollars wisely." See, today, as we are leaders in the country, we send a very strong message to Sacramento and Washington: Don't mess with our kids. They're too valuable. LA's got it right. LA voters have put twenty billion dollars in to close the gap. Because we've gone seventh, we've gone from being seventh in the nation per, per pupil spending to 47th. And that is not the kind of vision we have for our kids. So today, as we celebrate what we've done for the economy, what we've done for the tax base, what we've done for the industry, and most importantly, what we've done for the children of LA, we are absolutely sending a very strong message. Invest in us. We know what we're doing. Why did it take us so long to build this school? And why did it cost us a billion dollars? That's what we want to know. Hydrogen sulfide, once you breathe it, it destroys your brain cells, and they never come back. All you have to do is read Kay Kilborn's book on toxic brain damage. Chemical brain damage is what the book's called. I have had more referrals 
for special education since that explosion than I ever remember having. And I have seen many children drop out of school because they're uneducable. If this is what we want as a Belmont High School, we already have seen at Wilmington School how this plays out. I don't really think it can be justified to do the experiment again. It was conclusive the first time. What seems to have happened today is that all the people that were on the podium speaking or discussing how safe this site is and how great it is and, and the lack of accountability has been surmounted. And yet when you go to anyone thus far, and even people here that have said that they too believe that it's safe, when you ask them where is the data, where is the information that would back that up, that would show what mitigation systems have been put in where, they don't know. They don't, they don't have an answer. And I just, I, it doesn't compute to me. Where are the answers? Where is this information? And that's what we're trying to find out. A billion dollars for the toxic school. A billion dollars. You can watch this program in its entirety as a full disclosure subscriber, or you can purchase the DVD on our website. Full Disclosure will continue to bring you the news behind the news.